everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today I'm going to do the All About Eyes tag. This tag was started by the lovely Nisha at Sugar Puff and Fluff and I'll put Nisha's link in the info bar below so that you can go to her channel and see what her answers were for the same questions. So there are about 10 questions and they just cover the gamut of you know everything having to do with your eyes. Question number one is what is your favorite eye serum or cream? And um, I have been using the same thing under my eyes for oh probably about seven or eight years now. I use Olay Regenerist Micro Sculpting Serum in the Fragrance Free. This is a great question. I'm glad Nisha asked this one because I get this question in the comments below my videos and on my blogs all the time. People ask me what what eye cream or eye serum I use. And my answer is always I don't use a specific eye cream that is marketed just for the eyes. While there's some things that you can't put directly onto that skin because it is a little bit more delicate like my Retin-A and my um, uh, glycolic acid I don't put you know right under here on my eyelids. Everything else I, that I put on my face also goes here and also goes on my eyelids. So this I use it twice a day, morning and night after I've washed my face and I just put it on. I start with my eyelids and my under eyes and rub it in and then just go for the rest of the face. And then whatever moisturizer I use, I also put that there because I feel like moisturization is the main thing that's going to help there. And you know, where I'm always already using Retin-A and Vitamin C, that stuff is getting over there by cell communication. So I feel like I don't really need anything else for there. I like this because it's got hyaluronic acid, super moisturizing. So that's my go-to under eye cream. All right, the next question is, what is your favorite under eye concealer? Now, I did a, a video on under eye concealers a couple of months ago, so I know that I have tested a whole mess of things. And my favorite out of that, and the one that I'm still using, is the Lorac Touch Up To Go pen. Now, that one actually that I used in that video, I just finished, and I just bought this one at Ulta last week. And I get this in the color CF2. It's the second to the lightest color. This is a nice little package. It's got a nice soft brush and you just, you know, press the end and a little bit comes out here and then you, you know, just brush it on under your eyes. Now I don't have big under eye problems. I don't have big bags and I don't have a lot of darkness under there. So I can get away with using um, kind of a sheer product that doesn't have as much coverage. So that's the nice thing about this is it's very sheer, it blends very easily, and it just brightens up that area and it doesn't settle into fine lines and wrinkles, which was the main thing in my testing in the video I did. Um, you know, and a lot of the other products did and where I don't need the heavy coverage, I can use something that doesn't settle. Otherwise, there's all this other stuff that you can do to keep it from settling. But for me, this is the one that I like the best. It comes in like 12 shades, so you can find a shade match. And it also has anti-aging stuff in there, vitamins A, C, and E, and antioxidants. So that's just adding another layer of anti-aging stuff right there, um, which is another reason that I don't use a specific eye cream is because my concealer has anti-agers in it as well. All right, the next question is, what is your favorite eyebrow product? And I have to say, I really am not a big one for doing my brows, but actually I've noticed that as I've gotten older, they've gotten thinner. So now I really do have to start using some kind of an eyebrow product. So anyway, the one that I have been liking is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. And this is just a brow pencil, um, self-sharpening. So you just twist it up at this end, and then it's got a little spoolie at this end. And it's a one color, so it's, you know, kind of a one-size-fits-all thing. But the color is a very pale, taupey brown. So it goes really well on my eyebrows, and I used it today. So I just think that, you know, once your eyebrows start getting sparse and you need to fill them in, it helps to frame your face a little bit and make your eyes seem a little more open. And I'm actually enjoying not doing them, because while I hate to have an extra step, I like how they look. So I'm going to start doing them more um, in the future. So that's my favorite eyebrow product. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. The next question is your favorite eye primer. Okay. <laughs> Keep it down out there. And I have tried many, many eye primers, and I don't really like most of them. But what I do use for an eye primer is a MAC paint pot. And I get this one in Painterly, and this is my go-to primer. I use this practically every day. It's just a nice sort of warm, fleshy, pinky fleshy tone, almost a mauve. And you know, you just dip your finger in and I just pat it all over my eyelid. Now my eyes 
Um, my eyelids were sun damaged when I was young and baking in the sun, and so my eyelids are freckled. And so I love this that it has a color in it, so it really sets it up to be a nice, um, clean palette to apply my eye makeup to, and it helps the colors pop, and man does it help your powder shadows stay in place. When I use this as my base, my powder shadow doesn't go anywhere all day. It still looks good at the way end of the day, and I have to really, you know, work to get it off and to get this off in particular. So that's why I love this. When I first got this one, there weren't many matte colors available, but I was just at the matte counter the other day. They had great new matte colors. There was one called Camel Coat that was like a light taupey brown that was beautiful, and there was another one that was more of a uh, neutral, less pink than this, a little more yellow, and that one was gorgeous too. So I'm kind of hoping that I can get some of those in my stocking at Christmas this year. Okay, so that's that. The next question is, what is your favorite eyeshadow palette? And you can only pick one. So apparently people have a hard time because there are so many beautiful palettes out there. Uh, not me. I like individual pots better, and so I don't really own that many palettes. And the ones that I do have, I kind of struggle with using them. Um, so this one was a no-brainer for me. It is my Urban Decay Naked Basics palette. I picked this up as an impulse purchase in the line at Sephora last year. It retails for $27. It's very small compared to most palettes, but what I like about it is that it's all neutrals. So you know I'm kind of a nature girl with the eyeshadow. I like, I like taupes and grays and browns and tans and that is pretty much it for my day-to-day -day look. So for a palette I love this because they're all matte. I think this one might have a tiny bit of shimmer in it so that's great for doing like a little highlight under your brow or in the inner corner but the rest are completely matte and they're just a really nice range of taupey shades. A, a yellowy one, a pinky one, a taupey one, a more browny one, and then a true black. So you can get a range of looks from this. You can do a really nude eye and all the way up to a really big smoky eye, you know, smoke it out with the black. So I love that. All right, the next question is what is your favorite eye makeup remover? So this one I use too. And I use these in combination, so I can't really say which is my favorite because I use them together. So I guess I haven't found like a holy grail eye makeup remover yet. So I use these Elme oil-free um, discs. It's just like a little, a little round disc in there and you just, you know, wipe your eye makeup off with it. They work pretty well, but it always does leave some, uh, especially if you're using waterproof eyeliner or waterproof mascara, it leaves some of that behind. Make sure you get the oil-free. There's, there's two kinds of these. The packaging is almost identical. The um, oil-free ones don't leave a greasy residue. The, the ones with oil do, but they probably get off makeup a little bit better. So. You know, you gotta choose it that way. The other product that I use is the Simple Eye Makeup Remover. So I just do a couple of drops of this on a Q-tip every night after I remove the bulk of my eyeshadow. And I just use that to go in and really lightly remove whatever's left around in the waterline or <clears throat> of the eyeliner or at the base of the lashes, because that seems to be where it really sticks in there and is hard to get off. So I use that to gently clean that off. All right, the next question is, what is your favorite mascara? Now, for the last couple months, I've been exclusively using the CoverGirl Clump Crusher. And um, I had tried a number of mascaras before this one. And this one has become my favorite, mainly because of the tiny little wand that it has. See how small that is? All right. Now, I don't have, you know, big luscious lashes. I have, like, short, stumpy lashes. And so I really have to dig in there to get them out. And my problem is, with being older and not being able to see so well, I quite often poke myself in the eye with the bigger, fluffier wands, and I end up with mascara, big ring down here and big ring up here. So I like this one mainly because I don't poke myself in the eye with it so much. The formula is fine. You know, it does. it's not going to give you mega lashes or winged out lashes or curled lashes or super length. But, you know, for an everyday mascara, it's great. It stays in place. My other problem with mascaras is I have really super watery eyes. And, um, you know, I always end up with a little puddle of mascara down here that I'll walk around with all day. And with this, it stays in place. I don't get the puddle at all. So that's great. So I'm loving this one. I did just buy the L'Oreal Butterfly Mascara. I'm going to give it a 
I'll probably do a full review on it, but let me just say that um, it's weird because it's scented. It smells like gardenias, and as you flap your lashes, you get this weird gardenia scent all day long. And I get the little puddles at the corner. So while it's a pretty good mascara, I don't think it's great for me. Plus the wand is bigger, and I have poked myself in the eye with it. So, so the Clump Crusher reigns supreme where I'm concerned with mascara. All right, moving on from mascara, the next question was about what's your favorite eyeliner? Not specific brand, but what type? Do you like a pencil? Do you like a gel? Do you like a liquid liner? Or um, what's the other one? I think using powdered shadows and a push brush. So my favorite is liner pencils. I just love the ease and simplicity of pencils, and especially where I'm getting older, it seems to be the easiest one to apply that I can actually control where it's going. Um, with the liquid liner, it can be difficult once you get older and your eye skin is a little bit wrinkly. I did do a video on how to apply liquid liner better if you're older, and the way to do it is to make a template with an eye uh, pencil and then go over that with your liquid liner and that gives you like the perfect a smooth line on the top without a lot of you know jaggedy bits where it's gotten into your your um, wrinkly skin so I love uh, just a nice soft pencil two of my favorites I have here this is a wet and wild uh, silver shimmer pencil I love this one in the uh, lower water line just to brighten up that area. I use that one almost daily. And then I brought this Smashbox pencil, which I love. This is the Smashbox, what is it, Limitless uh, pencil. It's waterproof or water resistant, I think. And it's just a nice, creamy, smooth pencil. You can see I've used it down to a little nub. What I love about it is that it has a sharpener right in the lid. And that is very convenient for travel. So a waterproof pencil for me is the way to go. All right, the second to last question is, what is your favorite single eyeshadow pot? And for singles, I really love the MAC matte shadows. This one I brought today is my favorite, <clears throat> and the reason I know it's my favorite is because I have hit pan on it, and I'm going to have to replace it soon. So this one is in the color Blanc type. For me, my go-to color is like kind of a kind of a pale nudie color, and it's really perfect for just doing right on your eyelid, especially if you have uh, hooded lids with saggy skin like I do, and you really need to create some sort of definition up there and fake a crease. And that's what I use this Naked Basics palette for, and this is to fake the crease. So if you put this on your eyelid and then you do some darker stuff up above the crease, you can really get quite skilled at faking it and making your eyes look bigger and more open and like your eye skin is not sagging right on your eyelashes. And to do that, you really need a nice matte palette of colors, and this is a great basic one to have. All right, and the last question on Nisha's hip parade of questions was about your favorite sunglasses. And these are my favorite sunglasses. These are Oakley's. I got these on Rue La La um, about a year and a half ago. They were on there for such a bargain. These are expensive sunglasses in real life. I usually don't buy expensive sunglasses because I tend to lose them or sit on them or I break them. So anyway, I got these and I just love them. I should try to get the, my lights to not be so glary, so I brought those two white patches. Um, but anyway, I love how they fit my face. I love how they don't let any sunshine in at the top. They come down really low here. They're, they're, you know, they're not big at the sides, but they kind of curve around there, so there's not a lot of space between my face and the sides. I have a very petite face, and so it's hard to fit sunglasses on me. And I also have kind of weird, my, uh, the bridge of my nose doesn't go in that far, and so a lot of sunglasses that have something here like, um, uh, not Wayfarers, but um, Aviators, I can't wear because they make a dent right there on my forehead. So I have to be really careful when selecting sunglasses that the bridge, uh, you know, is low enough that it doesn't give me a dent in my forehead. And I like these because they seem to perfectly follow the line of my eyebrows. So anyway, these are perfect sunglasses for me. And I just wanted to say that if you don't wear sunglasses, everybody as you're aging, and even if you're not that old and you're watching this, uh, please wear sunglasses. A lot of people find out when they get older that not wearing sunglasses uh, can contribute to the growth of cataracts. So over your lifetime, sunshine, it's wonderful. I love it. I love being warm. I love, you know, being at the beach and I love summer. But sunshine, it turns out, is pretty destructive to, you know, our skin and some parts of our bodies, including our eyes. And so if you let too much UVA and UVB rays, 
uh, into your eyes over your life, it can contribute to the growth of cataracts. And simply wearing sunglasses or wearing a hat with a wide brim to shade your eyes from the sun can drastically reduce your incidence of getting. But you know, I know so many people who now that they're in their 50s, 60s, 70s are faced with cataract surgery. And if you can avoid that by simply wearing sunglasses, then why not? So that is it for the All About Eyes tag. Thank you, Nisha, for tagging me. And I looked at Nisha's list of who she tagged. There are a lot of people in there that I probably would have tagged as well. So I can't think of anyone offhand, but if you're watching this video and you uh, like the questions and you want to do the tag, consider yourself officially tagged. Um, and then if you do it, don't forget to link back to me. I love it that YouTube now we can put uh, links in the comments so you can link your video to mine and we can link my video to yours. So that's it for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And as always, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.